guess the obvious question is, uh, what's the uh, status of Andrew? Dana Daystone, um, he's been participating pretty much full since uh, Friday's pregame skate. And we've just been getting updates after every skate. I think he's progressing nicely, still doing some type of therapy slash rehab um, twice a day. And uh, he's coming along. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised actually either way if he was an option for Friday or if he wasn't. Um, I, I think it's still all positive. It's still all moving forward. This is just he has to wrap his arms around where he's at in terms of the pain tolerance, the pain level with certain things. And um, I trust him. He'll come to us and tell us when he's when he's ready to be in the discussion. And that hasn't happened yet. Obviously, oh, sorry. Um, obviously, you don't want to rush him back at all. But does the way Burke's been playing recently make it easier to say, you know, you can go ahead and take your time and just whenever you feel like you're ready to go? You can well, we were doing that anyway. Um, but yes, you know, Tommy's played more than ad admirably in, in Andrew's uh, absence. And uh, that's what sports is about, right? It's about opportunity. And uh, Tommy's opportunity was in practice before Andrew got injured. And then once he got injured, he got an opportunity in the game and he took advantage of that opportunity. So from our perspective, you know, we weren't going to rush Andrew anyway. I don't think this is something that we can rush him back from. Um, but we did tell him. Uh, you come to us when you feel you can be in the discussion to play in games, and that's hasn't happened yet. But I, again, I think we're progressing with that. Tommy's play has taken a little bit of the pressure off, I guess. How late could Hammond come to you for you to have him in the lineup? Well, the fact that he's practicing, he could come to us Friday. Okay. Um, it's not like he's sitting out watching. We've we've taken that if you don't practice, you don't play approach with everybody. And, and Andrew's been full goal practice since last Friday. So if he comes to us Friday and says I'm ready to play, um, then he'll be in the discussion to play. You just talk more about Burke and what you saw in him and what what. I, I think I think there's a there's a confidence in Tommy that I didn't I didn't know necessarily was there because I hadn't seen him in that situation yet at this level. I mean, we know we talk to people, we we do our due diligence on the boy and the recruiting process. We spend time with him, but he's not in that situation. Um, I mean, I talked to Tommy uh, post game uh, Monday morning. I talked to him about the shootout and he said, oh, I knew we were going to win the shootout. I'm really good at shootouts. And, and uh, from a goaltending perspective, you know, it's, it's, to me, I look at it, it's the same thing as when I look at a guy on a bench and he says, I want to shoot in the shootout. That's the kid you want. You don't want the one who's, please don't pick me, please don't pick me. Um, and, and I don't I don't look at it as any other but a positive that Tom, that's his mindset. You know, whether he wins every shootout or every game or whatever, his mindset is that he can get the job done. And that's what's impressed me the most. He's just been able to be confident and perform. And, and you can see it now in practice. You can see him with a little bit extra confidence, a little bit uh, more of a presence uh, when he's in the net. And, and obviously that's a good thing. It's, 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 that's what's pretty cool about college sports is that you get to see a, a young guy put in an opportunity that we think he deserved uh, and take advantage of the opportunity. So that, that's, that's what's been most impressive. Where, where do uh, Tate and uh, Fletch stand on this? Uh, Tate is is um, is con is he's contributing and, and, and practicing like participating in practice, but not at a hundred percent level and not through all the drills. Tate uh, Pletch is back to um, being in the discussion to play. He's he's full go. So Tate, does Tate still have some conditioning issues? Yeah, and, and and he really we're not to to the point where he's hitting yet, and and, and obviously that's a huge part of his game and, and just that. Not necessarily the body checking, but just the contact, just the the battling, the the you know down below tops of circles, grinding out plays and stuff. He's not there yet, so it'll be that that's kind of a combination type thing, um, confidence in, in in his body and, and 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 conditioning. So he's he's getting kind of getting both, but I don't I don't think we're there yet. And and Plutch has basically been in the discussion starting Monday. So the Tate, we're probably looking at Western Michigan. Well, I, I think at the earliest. When you look at uh, things for the week, uh, just taking care of the puck and puck management and stuff. Yeah. The reason I say those things in particular is because when those things go sideways, and I'm going to throw our awareness in there. If we all think back of the first goal on Saturday night, um, 
it just wasn't a very good awareness shift by our defensemen in particular and ended up in a two-on-one. And What that does, lack of play with the puck, lack of poise with the puck, lack of awareness, it leads to opportunities. And then in Ohio State's case, it led to goals. Well, that then it starts to, to, to mess with our mindset. It starts to mess with that positive energy that we had created with a 2 nothing lead. Uh, so, um, yes, that's where we are right now. You know, we're not a team that's scoring six goals a game, so you can afford to... Uh, kind of shut off for three goals against. You just there's 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 no reason for it. There's no excuse for it, uh, and that's where we are. We're, we're looking for ways to get that 60 minute focus or that 65 minute focus. Um, but I do think, again, we showed some pretty good resiliency by uh, giving up three goals in a five six minute span, and then kind of sort of you know stop the bleeding if you will and buckle up and have a good third period and, and find a way to tie the game and then you know at least go head to head you know after that point of us being behind three to two so um, we showed some resiliency I want to show some finish I want to show some clothes I want to show a two nothing lead turn into a four five one win not a, a scramble and, and have to find a way to to get the third goal to tie um, and, and that's that's where we are. I think it starts with puck management, awareness, all that kind of stuff, because that starts to play with our mental focus and our mental energy, and uh, we need to find a way. Seems like a lot of that is on the defenseman right now. It just seems like they're really struggling to, to make plays. And, and I mean, I don't want to point the finger at just right. the defenseman. I think there's all there, there there's room for improvement everywhere. But you know, we we've, we've said the same thing to our defensemen. We need we need uh, stronger play. Uh, from our D. We're, we're asking them to defend, we're asking them to get the puck, uh, be clean with the puck and get it to the forwards. I mean that's what we're asking them to do and I know they're capable of doing it, they've done it. So it's just a matter of them getting out of their own way and getting back to playing the game the right way for the whole time. Because it was shifts and, and segments of that game where we were really, I mean Rusty after scored the first goal. You know, but when we, then we shut off for five or six shifts in a row and we get pinned in our, our end and we have to defend and or we're giving up goals because of awareness issues or play with the puck issues. And, you know, we're going to I don't think it's a bad thing to put a little bit of pressure on the on the group as a whole. There's nine of them back there, or I guess eight, excuse me, with Slope being out and Rolfs not being able to play. But, um, you know, let, let's put a little pressure on ourselves and uh, make sure the standard gets raised and we start getting the job done at a higher level. And what, what have you seen from uh, Burko and uh, Watala so far? It seems like they've been very good at times. Those two in particular? Yeah. And, uh, um, yeah, I think, I think with, with Adam Burko, the sky's the limit yeah. with that kid. He's, he's a real big guy. He's got a, 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 a real energy and heart to play the game and, uh, and compete hard, which that's something that, you know, we... we We've not been surprised about, but just his, his, the amount of compete in him. Uh, he sometimes gets a little bit loose with the puck, and he sometimes gets a little bit uh, lax uh, when, when he's got it on his stick, and, and you know when he needs to really bear down and get the puck in or get the puck out or whatever. But when Adam's on, he's a handful. He's physical. That when he's not on, he kind of gets away from playing physical and playing through the body. Um, but again, he set the bar so high when he's on. He Potentially, he's the best player in the ice. You know, uh, Wotala is a guy that you know we're looking for. Cam, from the start of this year, we we're looking for him to take his game from good to great, just like our team and so on. You know, we look at that from from our junior, from our sophomore to our junior year, and Cam's no different. What Cam is battling with, like every other young captain, is that balance, right? That balance between his game and the leadership, and, and we need both. Quite honestly, we need both. We need him to lead this program. This program is the players, it's his, it's, it's his team, and we need his game to continue to evolve. When he's on, he's a really good player. He's good on face-offs, he makes plays, he makes people around him better. Um, when he's off, he just gets a little, uh, little too normal, just a little too, uh, he blends in too much. I mean, he's a guy that should stand out all the time because that's how good he is. And, and we hold him to that standard, and, and I believe he believes in that. So. Um, I think that what we like about both of them is their, is their willingness to come out of their comfort zone and, and take their game to a whole new level. They both have potential to, for that level to be pretty high. You mentioned after Friday's game that you saw some issues with the, the defenseman sort of, I guess, transition passing up to the forwards and mm -hmm. out of the defensive zone. Is there a particular reason 
you saw for that? Was it the defensemen not hitting passing lanes or guys not moving around? It, it, it varies. I think it starts with getting back to pucks. We get lazy when we uh, get when we're not good at it. Uh, not only the guy going back to get the puck, but his partner going back to support him gets lazy and, and, and starts to watch versus support. Uh, and then uh, I think we just get a little loose at times and then we lose our focus for that split second. You got a team like Ohio State or Michigan State or whomever, they're on you in that split second that you take your foot off the gas and, and that is something that we struggle with. And then once we're in that situation, now we're, now we're playing in the D zone and what should have been a clean breakout, now it's transitioning to offense for us, which we, we want to be our game. Um, now we're in our D zone for another 25 or 30 seconds out of carelessness, out of lack of focus, out of a little bit of laziness. And, and again, it, it's not about want with our group. It's not about uh, uh, ability with the group. They want to and they're able to. We just have to execute better, which we're trying to teach them. Starts with intensity, starts with focus every day. So then when we go back to pucks in practice, it's just like a game. When we go back, when we uh, execute some type of de-exchange in practice, it's just like a game and so on and so forth. So then it's habit and then it's easy. Uh, we're not there yet. Michigan State. Uh, Michigan State, first and foremost, is a team we haven't played well against in the two years I've been here. We, we just have not gone to Munn with, with a real purpose. Um, I want that to change on Friday. Uh, they're a team that's, you know, they're two years into their new coach, uh, actually less than that. I think it's a year and, and, and a bit into their new coaching staff. Uh, so I know I've listened to Tom and asked this talk and just some press conferences and whatnot. I think they're, they're trying to figure out who they are. Excuse me. They're trying to develop who they are. I think they know who they want to be, and they're trying to make that happen. Um, uh, but they're a talented group. That, that's, that's the thing that we can't lose focus of. As, as we're trying to figure who we are and, and develop who we are and create that, that brand, um, you know, they're doing the same thing, but they've got talent there. So they're a team that hurts you if you're not ready to, to, to really dig in and battle and compete. And I think they've been a little bit of a tale of a couple different teams so far this year. Um, you know, their weekend at Minnesota obviously wasn't very good, according to the stats anyway, and, 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 the, and, the, and the box score and so on. Um, their, their weekend at Michigan State seemed to be, or excuse me, at Lake Superior State seemed to be better. You know, they, they, they got a split out of it, and we all know Lake State's not an easy place to, to, to go up there and win. So uh, we're expecting a, a great series. You know, I know this, this rivalry goes back long before me, and this may be one of the stronger ones uh, that Bowling Green has out there with Michigan State back in the, in the heyday, so to speak. Uh, you know, we, we want to put up more of a fight. And uh, again, they're a team on paper that has talent. They, they've lost some guys. They, you know, you lose a guy like Tory Krug, that's hard to, to replace him immediately. And I know they're, they're looking for people to do that. Um, so we're just, we're going to have to be prepared to do the things we're talking about in terms of taking care of the puck, in terms of keeping that good positive energy and, and making teams earn things rather than hand them things. Uh, this is no different because Michigan State, like anybody else, if you hand them stuff, they'll take it and they'll take advantage of it and they've proven it to us before. So um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a focus on Bowling Green. It's a focus on our game, knowing that it's a really difficult opponent and Friday night we're in their building. You know, I don't, I don't know if it was as much what they were doing as, 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 as how we played the last couple of years. That's not taking anything away from them. Things happen really quickly at Munn because their boards are extremely fast. The, 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 the boards are, are pucks bounce off the boards like no other. I mean, we've got quick boards here, but theirs are faster and quicker than ours. So things happen really quick. And if you're not ready, you're not into it, you're not focused, all of a sudden it's bang, bang, off the end wall, it's in, you know, to the tape of the guy you're supposed to be on and it's in your net. And, and I, I think we've got caught up in that a little bit. You know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice place. It's a place that's got lots of tradition, lots of history. Are guys worried about that? I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, if, I had, if I had the answer, I, we would have fixed it. But uh, it, it's something that we just haven't played well there. And, and uh, you know, the combination of their game and our game. But things do happen quick there and we need to be ready for it. I know you weren't happy with the uh, penalty kill Friday night, but on the whole, is, it, is the being perfect on the weekend still another step forward? Yeah, it, it's a step forward. I mean, uh, I thought we, we showed a lot more organization on Saturday, a lot more focus to 
playing the way we want to play. It looked like Friday we almost got lucky at times, you know. It, there was a means to our, a purpose to our madness on Saturday, Friday. We just seemed to be working to work, which obviously that's not what we want. Um, you know, I think the continuing to make teams earn the zone, continuing to anticipate without cheating when we're in the zone, and continuing to um, know when we really want to turn the pressure up and when we need to kind of just back off because they've got to spread out pretty good. I, th I, th I think we're, we're figuring that out. You know, that, that's the best way I can put it. I, it'll be a work in progress all year long, but I think the results have been better as of late and overall our process has been better. When you look at the power play, how much um, of an impact not having Ralph uh, is that? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if you can put a... Ralph is a guy that's made a power play better at, at, at every level that he's been on and we, we, we he's been at. And we've, we've brought him here to make our power play better, so it hurts. Mm -hmm. But in the same sense as not having Andrew Hammond and other people having opportunities, that's what this is. It's an opportunity for somebody else to step up and show that he can run the power play, and we're looking, we're still looking, you know. It's not one person's responsibility. It's our responsibility to find that person. And the one thing I, I, I guess I'll say is last weekend the intensity on the power play was a little bit better. I think we had much more zone time than we did at Colgate. Uh, we, you know, some of those pucks find eyes, they go in the net. You, we will make our own breaks in the power play. We're not going to get, nothing's going to get handed to us. It's not easy. There's no shortcuts. Pucks aren't just going to find their way in because we're, we're trying hard. We're going to have to earn those breaks and those bounces, and that starts with earning the zone, intensity on the power play, getting pucks towards the net, and so on. I think we're doing more of that. Uh, I really feel strongly that if you do things the right way on the power play, you'll get rewarded. Not having Ralphs out there to answer, it, it, yes, it, it's, it's one less guy. But again, without having Andrew Hammond out there, it's the same type of thing. It's an opportunity for somebody else. And I know we've got guys that have played in the power play before. We just need people to, to, to step up and take advantage of the opportunity they have right now. Saturday night, you know, after last year. Um, it felt really good. I mean, um, I've been trying to get back into the swing of things after missing nine months. And um, to get that goal really helped out my confidence a lot because I haven't been playing very well. I've been struggling, shooting the puck, just making plays. And getting that goal, just it, it just really shows like what I should be doing better and like how I've improved and from freshman year where that's really my like my point of where I'm in the point of emphasis right now. How do you feel physically right now? Physically I feel as good as I've felt um, since I've been here. Um, I think I'm stronger than freshman year. Once again going back to freshman year um, I'm definitely see the game better, our team's a lot better. Um, with all the people Burge has brought in, we have um, a solid core now and we're starting to show that um, we're going to be a force in the league. How, how were the early practices in the summer once you got back on the ice in terms of the conditioning after having been off? Um, I stayed out here this summer and um, did conditioning with uh, Kenny and our strength coach. And, uh, nothing really prepares you for on the ice conditioning, and I, I could have been more proactive at that. Um, that's on me, but uh, I've slowly gotten the conditioning back. Um, I'm still not where I need to be to help the team out, but um, I, I think it's I think it's coming back, and I feel a lot better on the ice today now. When you're first getting back into the on ice contact scenarios after coming off surgery, is there any mental roadblocks that come with that? Yeah, to an extent. I mean, the first week of practice, I was, um, I was kind of shying away from hits a little bit just because I wasn't sure how the shoulder was going to feel. And then uh, the confidence in the shoulders uh, started to come back, and it just felt um, I just felt a lot better about um, where I was going, like um, with the shoulder. Like it's the rehab this summer really helped and I feel I feel a lot stronger and ever since I got here my shoulders have been bothering me and it feels good to have a good one. With the uh, stretchy games you've got at home to help in the league, do you feel like you guys need to really take advantage of that and to, to get on a good run playing one six of the first day that you know 
Yeah, I, I think playing uh, at home, we're, uh, we're starting to get fans and that gives us a lot of good energy and that's, that's what's going to help propel us to the next level is being able to get establish a solid game here and then be able to take that on the road. Yeah, Coach Berger, I mentioned that you guys haven't played real well at uh, in the last two years. It's one guy who's been around for those two years. What, uh, what theories do you have maybe on why things haven't gone well? Um, there's, there's many ways of looking at it. I mean, we're, we're not a team that gets a lot of balances. I know that's kind of the easy way out is to look at balances, but we haven't gotten too many balances over the past couple of years that I've been here. And um, also, I think we're a team that's showing that we're growing, but we're, we're still not there yet um, with, with what our coach's expectations are. I think we just got to embrace what he's trying to put on us better. I mean, we're, we're slowly getting there, but I mean, as Burge says, it's a process. We'll, we're, we're starting to show signs of uh, improvement.